In this lesson, I'd like to explore the vent feature in SOLIDWORKS. The vent feature is demonstrated on the part called Plastic Part Snap and Vent, which you can find in your Infinite Skills Working Files folder for Chapter 4. You can see that I've created one already on this part. Vents are intended for plastic parts and for sheet metal. You can create vents in rectangular or circular arrangements, with the main features being spars, in this case the straight lines, and ribs, which are in this case circular. The entire feature is created from a single sketch. Let's examine how this was created and then create one ourselves. I'm going to roll this down to the vent feature at the very bottom of the tree and expand the vent to show the sketch that lies underneath. I'll click on the sketch and click the Edit Sketch icon in the pop-up toolbar. This particular sketch just uses a rectangle for the outline and then several crossed straight lines for what is known as the spars and then circles to create the ribs. Instead of having a circular array of straight lines and a set of circles, you could have just a crisscrossing pattern of straight lines. There are many ways in which you can arrange the ribs and spars in a vent feature, but the ribs in general need to cross the spars in order to make sure all the plastic material or sheet metal is supported. Let's get out of this feature and create our own now. I'll escape by using the confirmation corner and pressing the sketch icon. Now I'm going to click on the vent feature and choose the rollback tool from the pop-up menu. From here, I'm free to create a new vent feature, so let's do that. I'm going to select this small face on the handle end of the part and open a new sketch on this face. From here, I'm going to turn on the temporary axes, and you can do that through the drop down with the eyeglasses and select the second icon on the right. Next, I'll create a centered rectangle. So I'll click the center at the temporary axis in the middle and drag this out to one of the other temporary axes. This should automatically fully define the sketch. And I'll press the escape key here to deselect everything and get out of the rectangle sketch icon. And we see that it does. So let me now create some additional lines. Put in a line here, goes vertical from one side to the other put in a dimension. Now let's figure out what the length of this line is. So I'll just click on that and down here, we've got 3.374. So we can double click on this value, type an equal sign, and then type 3.374 divided by six. And that figures out the spacing. And so now let's click the green check to get out of the modify dialog and use a series of offsets. So we'll click on the offset tool, click on the line, change the value to 0.562. Unfortunately, we're going to have to hit reverse, I believe, and then click OK. Now we'll do this again, hit enter to reinvoke the command, select the offset line, click reverse and green check. Enter, select, reverse, green check. And we'll continue this until we have the entire space filled. And there we are. Now we want to create lines in the other direction. And just to make sure, I'll click on this line. I'll see that the length of this is exactly the same as the first one. So let's do the same thing again straight line across. Make sure that you're picking up the automatic relation for horizontal. You can see that by the icon in the lower right hand corner of my sketch cursor. It shows the horizontal line with a yellow field. This indicates that it's going to pick up a horizontal relationship automatically. All right, press escape to get out of the command. And now we're back to putting a dimension on here of 0.562 and repeatedly using our offset command, and unfortunately reverse as well to make this happen again and again. 
The enter button will help you restart the last command without needing to select it from the toolbar again. Okay, now we have a grid of sketch lines and let's just check to make sure that this is all placed correctly. If your grid of lines is partially inside and partially outside the model, so if it had been on another plane, this feature will not work. So it has to be completely to one side of the face. We have a special circumstance here, really, because the face that we're putting the vent on is curved and angled down. So now let's access the vent feature, which you can find through the insert command under fastening feature. Now the vent really doesn't have anything to do with fastening, but this is where SolidWorks put the tool. So we'll click on this and we'll start creating this feature. The first thing we need to select is the boundary. And in this case, the boundary is the set of straight lines around the outside. Now your boundary does not have to be rectangular. It could be circular. It could also be established by splines. So showing this as a rectangular grid is really just an exercise. Under the geometry properties, the face to be selected is currently showing the sketch face, which is incorrect. We want to pick on this face of the model. Don't let the preview disturb you. We will set up the rest of the feature so that the spars and ribs fill in the grid within this boundary. Notice that some of the other functions that are available here are to turn the draft on and off and also to fill in some radius values. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Notice also that SolidWorks is giving us a flow area. This is in case you need to do a calculation that involves a minimum flow area for a vent that allows air or another liquid to flow through. The next selection we have to create here is the ribs, and because the sketch lines in two directions are identical, it doesn't matter which set we pick, so let's just pick a set of parallel lines. And SolidWorks, you can see, is establishing the ribs. We can create our own thickness settings and the width values as well. Notice that the ribs and spars do not necessarily have to have the same thickness as the rest of the part. We could set this all up with individual values. The spars will just be the sketch lines in the other direction. And we have to select all of these. Remember in the example that I showed earlier, we used circles in one direction and straight lines in the other. You could also use arcs or splines, or partial ellipses, or anything that you like in order to create this pattern. Again, the thickness for the spars can all be set independently. Let's go back now and have a look at the radius value, so that if we put a number in here, such as 0 0.02, SolidWorks adds in small fillets in between the intersections of the ribs and the spars and the boundary. We can also add a draft amount here, and we'll get our draft direction from the top plane, and we can set it to three degrees. If the preview disappears momentarily, it's just because the draft feature is not working while you get everything selected. The fill-in boundary can be a boundary, say, in the center if you wanted to add a logo. In this case, we don't have anything to show for the fill-in boundary. So let's just click the green check to make sure that our results come through. And here we are with a simplified vent pattern. Now let's compare this against the original vent pattern. Click on the vent 2 that I've just created and suppress it. Let's turn off the temporary axes while we're here and then unroll the feature manager so vent one can be shown. And now that we've seen how the vent is created, let's go back and edit the feature of vent one and examine how this was created now that we've created our own feature. The boundary in this case, again, is just the set of four lines around the outside of the vent feature. The face, is again the curved face of the plastic part. We've added a radius value of 060, 
which you can see in some of the corners here gives a nice rounded effect. The ribs, in this case, are the straight lines that extend radially from the center. In fact, these just cross at the center. And the spars, in this case, are all of the circles. You can get rather creative with how you establish these ribs and spars. You just have to allow for the fact that they should cross at roughly right angles. We could use a fill-in boundary here of this center circle. In order to do that, I would have to remove it from the spars and use it in the fill-in boundary. And you see now that SolidWorks has given us a solid plastic area in the middle. This is sometimes used for support, but very often used for a logo or something of that nature. If you create a vent feature that you think you will use again and again, you can enter these settings as a favorite. By clicking the plus, you can create a new favorite, give it a name, and save it out. That way, the next time you come back to the vent feature, you'll be able to select this new vent setting from the favorite dropdown. After the vent was created, some additional features were added to this part just to round out the way it looks. For example, all of these small fillets were not part of the vent feature, but part of a separate fillet feature. Again, the vent feature is intended for plastic parts or sheet metal parts, but it is not limited to either of those types. Anytime you need this kind of geometry, the vent feature can be used. 